Hello everyone, my name is Ankush Chaudhary. I am CEO and founder of Learnome Technologies. Along with me, Tausip is there. So we are going to understand about the Oracle DBA concept. And you might have already seen our previous playlist of Oracle DBA interview questions. So this is the fifth episode of Oracle DBA mock interview questions and answer. If you have not gone through our previous videos, please go check it. And if you have any questions, queries, anything related to the Oracle DBA, please put it in the comment sections. So yes, we have a Tausip. Hi Tausip, how are you? Hello sir, I am fine. So Tausip, uh, let me see how much you are comfortable with the Oracle DBA. Okay. Can you please tell me about your roles and responsibility as a DBA? Sir, my roles and responsibilities as a DBA to maintain a database, to check database should be up and running uh, time to time. Okay. Or we need to check storage related information. Mm -hmm. Uh, that should be not full mm. and uh, main sure that security related issue okay. if any coming so that's it. so let's say you have some issues with your database related to the bugs okay so what you're going to do what's your approach uh, first if you, if come any issue then we will check alert log file mm. after that uh, if any bugs is available we'll apply patches mm. uh, for bugs we especially use a uh, uh, PSU we can use directly okay so what are the different different type of patches you have applied or you uh, know? Different different patches, uh, CPU patches available mm. and uh, PSU patches and uh, one of patch available. Okay. Uh, if you apply PSU patch, that's okay. It will fix all the error. Fine. So what utility you are going to use to apply the patch? Utility we use opatch utility mm. to apply patch. And where it is available? It is available in Oracle Home. Oracle Home. So can you tell me the step by steps to apply the patch? Step by step, first we will check version of patch. Mm. If it is outdated, we will update our patch. Mm. After that, we will check any conflict is available mm. or not. Uh, if it is all clear, then we apply uh, directly patch. Okay. Then uh, after applying patch, we will uh, check it uh, software level like mm. uh, post script mm. or uh, data patch. Data patch. Okay. Okay. If you want to check it is apply on database level, you can use DBA registry. Mm. Met, uh, we would met view table okay there you can check. fine see like in order to answer this question now like you can start like always try to you know break down it into the three part like the prerequisite okay. so before you apply the patch what are all the steps you are going to perform like you are going to check the invalid object count you are going to take the backup of your oracle home and oracle inventory you can also take the database backup also okay then you can say like okay then we are going to download the patch from oracle support once you got the patch, you are going to check the pre-checks. In pre-checks, you are going to check whether the opatch version is, um, you need to upgrade it or not. Then you can check whether you have any space issues are there, whether you have any conflicts are there. So these okay. are the prerequisite. Then you are going to upgrade the opatch if it is required. Then you are going to apply it, like you are going to apply the patch. Okay. Once the patch is applied, then the post steps will be like, you are going to check the invalid object count here. So we are before and after. Your invalid okay. object count should be correct. Correct. And then, you know, uh, you can just check with the application team whether everything is fine or not. So, correct. step by step, go with that. Okay. Now, apart from this, what do you think? Like, where I should ask the questions? Do you have any specific topic in your mind? Uh, yes, sir. You can ask um, data pump related. Data pump utility. Okay. Fine. So, let's say I want to take the backup by using data pump utility. Okay. But the problem is that I do not have sufficient space available on my mount point level. Okay. So basically I want to, you know, uh, let's say I have a table of size 100 GB, but I have 50 GB space available in one mount point, 50 GB space is available in another mount point. Okay. So what you're going to do? Sir, there is one parameter available. We can set multiple destination. Actually, parameter I don't remember, hmm. uh, but there is one available. We can set multiple destination that it will show in different mount state. Achha. So basically, you need to create a two different directories. Yes. So first one will be point to pointing to the first directory. Second one will point to the second, second directory. directory right. And you need to mention parallel equals to two also, so that it should create multiple, multiple dump. Okay. Correct. What if I want to restrict the dump file size? Let's okay. say I don't want my dump to be created more than ten GB. We can use file size parameter. File size parameter. And uh, let's take an example. I want to take the backup of schema along with their table, but I don't want to take the backup of data. I just need a simple table structure. Okay, there is one parameter content. 
content equal to metadata you can mention it will take only structure acha and by default it will take it will take a uh, uh, data data and metadata, metadata by default and what if if you want to take only data uh, there is only data we can mention you can mention content equal to content equal to only data data only it's Sorry, a data, data only. only fine so uh, let's take a example um, i'm using a parallel parameter and okay. it will create multiple dump right okay so how will be the name of your dump okay there will issue come we use a percentage u hmm. so it will change every time it name wait whenever it generate it will change the every time unique name. so wild parameter wild card uh, like you know that simple you need to mention percentage uh -huh. u percentage right? u can mention. so if it is creating 10 dumps it will be like underscore one underscore, underscore two one, yeah, something correct. like that okay uh, what is the difference between this RMAN backup and uh, this export import? Export import basically we use uh, when we take logical backup like schema level, table level. Uh, or uh, RMAN backup basically we use physical data mm. files available. That time we use RMAN. See in Oracle 9i, export import utility was not there. Okay. Then what to do? Oracle 9, there is one old version available like exp mm -hmm. and uh, exp uh, imp that is called. that's a traditional traditional uh, utilities are available yes, so what's the difference between exp and expdp exp expdp uh, i don't know currently so expdp is the advanced version which is started from oracle tenji um, basically it has a features like you can run the job uh, parallelly okay like you can use parallel parameter so this is a server side job what you are running you can stop job you can resume job the performance wise this export is quite better uh, when it comes to the exp um, now let's take an example do you know about the data guard comfortable data guard, uh, not much not much okay let's talk about the architecture side okay so explain me about the architecture architecture basically divided into two parts mm -hmm. first is memory mm -hmm. and second is data file mm -hmm. in instance there is one instant memory side uh, which what is, is instance? Instant is a background process mm -hmm. for memory mm -hmm. which we allocate to a database and mm -hmm. there is only SGACOM. We divide memory into three parts mm -hmm. shared pool and shared pool and uh, data buffer capture and mm -hmm. the read log file. It will divide into three parts. Mm -hmm. Whenever user come, it will go through the shared pool. It will check syntax <gasps> and semantic errors and uh, there is one data dictionary also but it will store only meta data information. Mm -hmm. After that, listener will come. If listener is correct, then uh, listener is okay then it will allow connection uh, if suppose customer is uh, run query is uh, select then it will come that query into data buffer cache and data buffer cache will check that data available in dirty block means in data buffer cache if it is available then not available then it will take from uh, data data files and uh, same read log who is going to write down that from data files to database buffer cache uh, server process mm -hmm. it is a background process which will write data file to data buffer cache mm -hmm. and uh, same time a uh, read log files you generate mm -hmm. and uh, read log in read log buffer cache if a user commit then it will come into the read log files so when your read log group 1 is full what will happen read log group 1 is file it will uh, logs which happen mm -hmm. in different read log group. Mm -hmm. and it will start writing to the another group another group Okay. What is archilog? Archilog is a basically a collection of read log file we can say because whenever log switch happen that it's a backup of read logs. Uh, backup of read logs. Mm -hmm. Whenever log switch happen that mm -hmm. read log file will generate in our whatever destination we are giving. On that. Okay. And how to check whether my database is in archilog mode or not? Archilog list. Archilog list. Can type it. So uh, there is a concept called soft parsing and hard parsing. What is that? Uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you explain different ask questions? See, uh, just take an example like uh, we have a user, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, before that, let's try to understand one more concept. Like uh, when you are running any command, like select start from EMP, okay. what will happen? Can you tell me the steps? Select start from EMP. Or any example, okay? You, you are running any DML or DDS statement. Okay. So, what will happen under the Oracle database architecture? If you are running any update query, mm. uh, then it will come into the listener and all, and it will come to sh uh, share pool after that. See, listener will come when the user want to connect to the database. Okay. New and user will connect to yeah. database. So once the user got connected, 
After that, what he is running, it is not his problem. Okay. Uh, it will come in data for our cache. Hmm. In will, uh, we suppose we are running update query. Hmm. It will come in data for our cache. Uh, it will update any value. Suppose uh, previous is 1000 and new is 2000. Uh, if it is run, it, there is one create a dirty block that hmm. it will store old value. In now tell me from like, you know, when you are running the command, select star from EMP, syntax check from there. Okay. So you are running the command. First of all, someone will be there now who is going to check the syntax, whether the okay. syntax is correct In or not. In shared pool, it will check syntax hmm. and semantic any error. Hmm. And there is one optimizer is available. Hmm. It will create a shortest path hmm. to execute that query. That is called execution plan. Execution plan. Hmm. After it will come in buffer cache. Database buffer cache. So let's say it has created multiple execution plan. Okay. Then it will choose the best plan among that. That best is called cost-based optimization. Oh. Okay. That will be done by your... Now here, see, I'm running one command, mm. but the plan is already exist. Okay. Because this is the second time I'm running the same command. Now when the plan is already exist, why we will create again new plan, right? Okay. We will use the same plan only, na? So that will save your time. You okay. got my point? Let's say I want to create two home. So first home, we already created a plan. Same home I want to create. So why we will create again plan? Okay, it will save the same plan. Same plan. That is okay. called soft parsing. Hard passing means he is going to create it from the very beginning again. Okay, new plan. So which one is faster? Soft is. Soft is faster. Correct. Okay. Now, let's talk about the data file. What is data file? Data file is a collection of data, user data. So all your data will be there? There. In the data files. Data files. How to check how many data files I'm having? This metadata, hmm. DBA data file. DBA underscore data, data underscore file. files. Okay. Uh, from you can write using that you can check okay or, um see i want to drop the database let's say i want to drop a database okay what are the steps are there there's two steps we can drop first one is a gui gui method okay and uh, second one is uh, silent mm -hmm. gui dbc is available okay uh, you can directly drop the database mm -hmm. in uh, silent there is uh, you need to put in restrict mode database mm -hmm. and drop database what is meant by restricted mode Restricted mode means uh, no one will connect to database. Okay. So, so you need to shut down the database, start the database in restricted mode and drop the database. Drop, drop database. What will happen when you are dropping the database? It will delete all the data file data files mm. and uh, control file SV file. Does it delete a backup? No, it will not delete backup. The backup will not get deleted? No. What about the softwares? Software will not delete. For software, there is different utility available. We can delete that. How? Deinstall is available. Mm. Uh, by calling that, you can delete software and it will also delete database. Okay. Mm. So I think, uh, like, you know, the interview was quite good, uh, quite meaningful. And uh, I hope the audience who are looking uh, to this YouTube channel, they are also learning a lot of things from this interview. Again, we are coming with the next uh, episode of Oracle DBA mock interviews with new student. But if you have any questions, you know, definitely you might have a question in your mind and uh, you are thinking that, okay, I should ask that. So please put it into the comment sections and those people who do not have a question, but they are very much interested, you can just mention as interested in the comment section. Again, so you will see a lot of contents available on our YouTube channel. You can share this mock interview with your family, friends, connections or anyone who want to start their career into the DBA side. So thank you. Thank you so much for giving your valuable time.